Hello, my friends. <coughs> I am Dr. Armen. Dr. Y. <laughs> Professor Armen Astvatsetrian from Yerevan, Armenia. And we continue <coughs> our lectures, my friends. And today we will talk about what? About Atlet's heart, right? Let's talk about Atlet's heart, my friends. So, okay, what is what is Atlet's heart? Atlet's heart is a constellation. It's a constellation of structural and functional changes. It's a complex of structural and functional changes that occur in the heart of people who train for more than one hour most days. So that's athlete. Uh, most who is athlete who train more than one hour a day. Most days. The changes are asymptomatic. Signs include bradycardia, a systolic murmur, and extra hard sounds. Of course, of course, bradycardia, no doubt. So. ECG, echocardiographic abnormalities, are common. Diagnosis is clinical or by echocardiography. No treatment is necessary. Athlete's heart is a significant because it must be distinguished from serious cardiac disorders. Intensive, intensive, prolonged endurance and strength training causes many psychological adaptations. Volume and pressure loads in the left ventricle increase, which over time increase left, left ventricle mass, wall thickness and chamber size. Maximal stroke volume and cardiac output increase contributing to a lower resting heart rate and longer diastolic filling time. Lower heart rate results primarily from increased vagal tone, but decreased sympathetic activation and other non-autonomic factors that decrease intrinsic uh, sinus uh, node activity may play a role. May play a role, yes. Bradycardia decreases myocardial oxygen demand at the same time increases in a total hemoglobin and blood volume enhance oxygen transport despite these changes systolic function and diastolic function remain normal structural changes in women are typically less than those in men of the same age body size and level of training Concerning symptoms and signs, uh, there are no symptoms, signs vary, but may include bradycardia and left ventricle impulse that is literally uh, laterally displaced, enlarged and increased in amplitude, a systolic ejection flow murmur at the left lower sternal border, third heart sound Third heart sound due to early rapid diastolic, diastolic ventricular filling, a force sound S4, heart best, uh, heart uh, S4, heart best during resting bradycardia because diastolic filling time is increased, and hyperdynamic carotid pulses. These signs reflect structural cardial, cardiac changes that are adaptive for intensive exercise. So, diagnose, diagnosis of athlete's heart. Of course, clinical evaluation, usually electrocardiogram, sometimes echocardiography, rarely cardiac magnetic resonance, magnetic resonance imaging, rarely, rarely stress testing. Findings are typically, are typically detected detected during routine screening or during evaluation of unrelated symptoms. Most athletes due to require extensive testing, tensi, uh, testing although ECG, ECG is often warranted if symptoms suggest a cardiac disorders, for example, palpitations or, uh, I don't know, chest pain. ECG, echocardiography and exercise stress testing are done. Athlete's heart is a diagnosis of exclusion. 
it must be distinguished from disorders that can that cause similar findings but are life threatening and of course first of all is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy dilated cardiomyopathy ischemic heart disease arrhythmogenic right ventricle ventricular dysplasia cardiac magnetic resonance imaging uh, can may be helpful when findings from uh, other diagnoses diagnostic modalities are inconclusive so ECG and uh, numerous changes in rhythm and ECG morphology can occur they correlate poorly with level of training and cardiovascular performance the most common ECG finding is of course a sinus bradycardia Rarely heart rate is less than 40 beats per minute. Rare, very rarely. Sinus arrhythmia often accompanies the slow heart rate. Resting bradycardia may also predispose to atrial or ventricle ectopy, include couplets and bursts of and bursts of non uh, non sustained ventricular tachycardia. Pauses after ectopic beats do not exceed 4 seconds. Wandering, wandering supraventricular pacemaker. Other ECG findings that may occur include first degree AV block in up to one third of athletes, second degree AV block mainly type 1, this finding occurs during rest and disappears with exercise, High voltage QRS, infer inferolateral T wave changes, reflective left ventricle hypertrophy, hypertrophy, deep arteriolateral T wave inversion, incl incomplete right bandle branch block. However, third degree AV block is abnormal and should be investigated thoroughly. Of course. No, third degree AV block, no questions, huh? <laughs> Even second degree AV block, Mobis 2 is under uh, is have to be investigated thoroughly. Uh, this ECG rhythm changes and uh, rhythm changes that have no haven't been associated with associated with adverse clinical events, suggesting that various arrhythmias are not abnormal uh, in athletes. The arrhythmias are usually abolished or substantially reduced after a relative brief period of deconditioning. So echocardiography can usually distinguish athlete's heart from the cardiomyopathy, but the distinction is not always clear because there is a continuum from psychological to pathological cardiac enlargement. The zone of overlap between athlete's heart and cardiomyopathy is left, is left ventricular septal thickness. In men 13 to 15 millimeters, in women 11 to 13. In this uh, uh, overlap area, the presence of mitral valve systolic anterior motion strongly suggests hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Also, diastolic indexes may, uh, may be abnormal in cardiomyopathy but are usually normal in athlete's heart. In general, echocardiographic changes correlate poorly with level of training and cardiovascular performance. Trace mitral regurgitation and tricky speed regurgitation are commonly detected. Of note, reduction of physical training will result in a regression of cardiac enlargement in patients with athlete's heart, but not those with cardiomyopathy. Okay, for example, features distinguishing athlete's heart from, uh, from cardiomyopathy. We talked about left ventricle septal sickness in athletes and in uh, cardiomyopathy. In cardiomyopathy, in men is then more than 15 millimeters, in women more than 13 millimeters. Left ventricle diastolic diameter is less than 60 millimeters in athlete's heart. In cardiomyopathy, normal, nor more than 70, 70 millimeters. Diastolic fun uh, uh, function, normal E and A ratio, EA ratio more than one, abnormal in cardiomyopathy, EA ratio is less than one. Septal hypertrophy in athlete's heart is symmetric, in cardiomyopathy asymmetric, in, especially in uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. No well, family history, actually none, 
or may be present, and in cardiomyopathy may be present. Blood pressure in athlete's heart is normal in cardiomyopathy. A normal or reduced systolic blood pressure responds to exercise. So athlete's heart is normally usual. Uh, one of this one of distinguishing chief uh, features. Blood pressure response to exercise is normal in athlete's heart. In cardiomyopathy, we've got problem. A normal or reduced systolic blood pressure response. So the conditioning in athlete's heart: left ventricle, ventricle hypertrophy regression, and no left ventricle regression. Uh, no left ventricle hypertrophy regression uh, in the conditioning. <coughs> okay, so this was about uh, ah yes, CMR, uh, CMR imaging. Uh, although confirmation in large studies is pending data, is pending data. So is pending data so far suggests that CMR, CMR we talk about uh, resonance, uh, CMR imaging may also help differentiate athlete's heart from cardiomyopathy. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, CMR may identify focal hypertrophy not identified on the electrocardiogram, particularly in the apex, anterior free wall, and posterior septum. Delayed imaging after injection of contrast may show a typical pattern of mild wall fibro fibrosis in some patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, particularly in left ventricular wall segments that exhibit maximal hypertrophy. However, this finding is absent in up to 60% of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Delayed enhancement of CM on CMR is also evident in non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy and may help differentiate Dilated cardiomyopathy from athletes from athletes heart. However, however, the finding is absent in 68% of patients with genetically proven dilated cardiomyopathy. T1 mapping techniques have shown have shown some potential to differentiate between athletes heart and uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, but further studies are required. Although exercise capacity, as measured by stress testing, testing, doesn't differentiate between athletes' heart and dilated cardiomyopathy, reduced cardiac contractile reserve with exercise observed on CMR imaging may be useful in establishing a diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy in an athlete. Stress testing. During st exercise stress testing, heart rate remains lower than normal as submaximal stress and decrease appropriately and comparably to heart rate in non-athletes at maximal stress. It rapidly recovers after exercise. So, once again, uh, during exercise uh, stress testing, heart rate remains lower than normal in submaximal stress and increases appropriately and, and comparably to heart rate in non-athletes. At maximal stress, it rapidly recovers after exercise. It's rapidly recovering is very uh, typical for uh, athletes. Blood pressure response is normal if systolic blood pressure increases, diastolic blood pressure falls. Mean blood pressure stays relatively constant. Many resting ECG changes decrease or disappear during exercise. This finding is unique to Atlas Heart, distinguishing it from pathologic conditions. We, not, we don't talk about arrhythmia. We talk about ST segment changing, for example. So-called repolarization abnormalities, for example. However, pseudo-pseudo-normalization of T-wave inversion should reflect myocardial ischemia, it does warrants uh, further investigation in uh, in older athletes. Uh, pseudo normalization. <coughs> no, okay. Also, a normal exercise uh, stress test result doesn't rule out a cardiomyopathy. Okay, okay. Prognosis and treatment. Uh, actually, what to treat? Uh, although gross structural changes resemble doesn't does uh, although gross structural changes resemble those in some cardiac disorders, no adverse effects are apparent. In most cases, structural changes and bradycardia regress with detraining. 
although up to 20% of uh, elite athletes, elite uh, athletes have residual chamber enlargement, raising questions. Um, yes, this question still now is not clear. Uh, in the absence of long-term data about whether atlas heart is truly benign. Uh, so concerning treatment, possibly a period of deconditioning to monitor left ventricle regression. No treatment is required, although three months of deconditioning may be needed to monitor left ventricle regression as a way uh, of distinguishing this, symptom, this syndrome for, from cardiomyopathy. Such deconditioning can greatly interfere with an athlete's life and may meet with resistance, of course. If this is, a, for example, from Real Madrid, huh, we have to uh, some questions. Yeah, we've got some questions. Have we have to do this deconditioning period or not? Because we can lose this athlete uh, for big sport, from big sport. Okay, and some key points. Uh, intensive physical of this pro athlete's heart. Huh? Intensive physical exercise increases left ventricle muscle mass, wall sickness and chamber size, but systolic function and diastolic function re remain normal. Resting heart rate is slow, and there may be a systolic ejection murmur at the left uh, flower sternal border, a third heart sound and or a four heart sound, S3 and S4. ECG shows bradycardia and signs of hypertrophy and sometimes other findings such as sinus arrhythmia and or ventricular ectopy and first or second degree atrioventricular block, heavy block. Structural and ECG changes due to athlete's heart are asymptomatic. The presence of cardiovascular symptoms, for example, chest pain, dyspnea, palpitations or third degree heavy block should prompt a search for underlying for an underlying cardiac disorder. So it's largely enough. Yes, that's enough concerning athlete's heart. Thank you for your attention. Please don't forget to support us. Uh, how to make this support? So if you are in United States, you can uh, find this possibility, this choice on my channel. And if this is not okay for you, you can find my MasterCard in description of this video uh, in YouTube or in podcast. Uh, this is my MasterCard. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no PayPal for the moment in Armenia, or the long moment in Armenia. So bye and see you in another lectures. God bless you, my friends.